All right, here are solutions to question one off the math subject GRE practice test, test 3768. The first problem asks you to evaluate this indefinite integral here. There's at least three different ways that you can solve this problem. At least three come to mind for me. The first one's probably more time consuming than you want, but in case you're not so good at calculus two, but you're pretty good at calculus one, instead of figuring out the antiderivative of e raised up to the ex power, we could figure out the derivatives of each of these different expressions. And whichever one of these expressions has e to the ex power as its derivative, that would be our answer. Unfortunately, some of these derivatives are kind of messy, like this one would be a product rule, this one would be a quotient rule. And if you get a little bit unlucky and end up doing these before you do some of these, it might take you a little while to come up with the correct solution. So while it would work perfectly fine to take the derivatives of each of these different answers, I don't recommend that method. I think what the test takers probably had in mind is to figure out the antiderivative of e to the ex power. And there's at least two different ways that you could do that. If you just finished a Calc 2 class, you might be able to just kind of reason that because the derivative of e raised up to some constant times x is almost just e raised up to that constant times x, but you gotta remember to apply the chain rule. So we gotta multiply this by the derivative of a constant times x, which is just that constant. What I'm saying is because the derivative of e to the ax is a e to the ax, the antiderivative of e raised up to the ax power is gonna almost just be e raised up to the ax power, but it's not quite that because if you took the derivative of this side, you'd end up with this extra a, and I don't want this extra a, I just want e to the ax power when I take the derivative of this answer. So I need a one over a to kind of cancel out with the extra a that I'd get if I took the derivative of e to the ax power. What I'm saying is that the antiderivative of e to the ax power is just equal to one over a times e to the ax power. This question doesn't ask me for e to the ax power. It asks me for e to the ex power, but e is just some arbitrary constant when it's a coefficient on x. So don't let the fact that this is the same letter here as you see down here throw you off. You treat this e up in the exponent like it's any other constant, like it's the letter a down here. So because the antiderivative of e to the ax power is one over a times e to the ax, the antiderivative of e to the ex power is just gonna be one over e times e to the ex power. I guess I should tack on a plus c and then I'd kind of be done. But unfortunately, if you look for this up in these answers, you won't see it because it's written in a different form. Instead of one over e times e to the ex power, they want you to think about it as e to the ex power divided by e plus our constant c. And when it's written in this format, maybe you can recognize that there's an exponent rule going on here. The second of these three exponent rules that you'll wanna have memorized for your test tells you that when you're dividing two exponential expressions that have the same base, you can rewrite that as the base raised up to the difference in those exponents. So playing the role of the x's here are the e's down in the base, and playing the role of the a is the ex, and the b is the implied one that's right here. So using this second rule, I can rewrite this expression as e raised up to the ex minus one power. And I believe this is the format that you see up here in the answers. Let's see, here it is, e to the ex minus one plus c. A nice consequence of this being the first of the five answers that they list is if you went with option one and you just took the derivative of all the different answers, you wouldn't have to get very far before finding your answer, right? The derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. So we take the derivative of this side and then the derivative of this side. For the derivative of this side, you gotta use the chain rule. So I got e raised up to the ex minus one power times the derivative of ex minus one, which is just e. And then I add to that derivative of a constant, which is just zero. I got e to the ex minus one times e to the first power. If you're using your first of these exponent rules, you add together those exponents to get e raised up to the ex minus one plus one power, right? That's this implied one right here. Negative one, positive one cancels out. We're left with just e to the ex power. The integrand that you see up here, the fact that the derivative of this answer is this integrand means that this is the antiderivative of this. As you can kind of see by all these different arrows that I have here, there's at least two different ways you can determine this antiderivative. This first way that I described is just kind of reasoning your way through it, thinking about what the derivative would be, thinking about kind of undoing the chain rule, informally speaking. But more formally, I think the way you'd probably be taught in your standard Calc 2 class is to use a u-substitution. 
The idea with the U substitutions is you want to choose something to let U be equal to so that when you substitute it into this integrand, this integral becomes really easy. I think the obvious choice in this case is to let U be equal to E to the X. Why E to the X? Well, because then instead of having E to the X up in the exponent here, I would just have a U up in the exponent, which is awesome. The antiderivative of E raised up to a variable is really easy. And maybe if you've never seen this before, you're like, whoa, that's the coolest trick ever. That makes these antiderivatives super easy. Well, it's not quite that easy. You can't just go changing e to the x into a u. One way to remind yourself of that is we still have this dx symbol over here that we have to take care of. The way you take care of this dx symbol is you take the derivative of both sides here. So du is equal to the derivative of e times x. The derivative of any constant times x is just that constant. And then remember to tack on a dx over on this side. If you've never seen this before, one way to remember that is use this symbol as your derivative. If u is e times x, du over dx is just equal to e. If this were a fraction, it's not a fraction, but if it were a fraction, I could multiply both sides of the equation by dx, and that would give me du equals e times dx. This is not multiplication, but it acts as multiplication in some sense. And you can sort of remember this case as why this dx ends up over on this side. Anyways, the idea is to use these two substitutions to rewrite this integral. We already changed this ex right here into this u, but we still have this dx on the outside that we have to change into du's. Unfortunately, we don't have e times dx on the outside. So what you might do here is divide both sides of the equation by e. You get one over e du is equal to dx. Now I can substitute in this dx is this dx. I can change it to one over e du. And what I've managed to do is rewrite this integral, which is in terms of x, as a new integral in terms of u. Note that you don't see any x's down here. My variable is a u and I have a du out here. That means that I can find the antiderivative in terms of u. Well, let's see, one over e is just a constant, so I can pull it out in front of the integral symbol. What I have left in the integrand is e to the u du. One of the first antiderivatives that I learned is that the antiderivative of e to a variable, that variable was probably an x, but it doesn't matter, just some letter, d, that variable, is just e to that letter, so e to the u in this case. Tack on a plus c and you're kind of done. The only problem is this answer is written in terms of u's, but u is something that you, y-o-u, created. You want your answer to be in terms of x's, so you gotta substitute back. Change all the u's in this expression into ex, what u is equal to, and you get 1 over e, e to the ex power plus c. Much like we saw right here, that's the correct answer, but it's not written in the form that the test has their answers in. You're supposed to recognize that and algebraically rewrite it as e to the ex minus 1 plus c, which is answer A.